What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys five advanced tips and tricks for your Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. A lot of people have requested this video uh, showing how to use some ADV commands and developer options to do some advanced things. That's why I've got the laptop up here. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of tips that don't require using uh, the ADB commands first. That's two of those, and then there are three that do require the ADB tips. So I will also talk a little bit about how to install uh, the tools that you need on your computer. I'm gonna be using my Mac. It's a little bit different if you use Windows. Now you'll probably notice I have this really nice black theme here. If you like this, I'm gonna make a separate video on all the components needed. We are gonna talk about one of them today, which is the weather widget. Now the first tip I wanna give you guys is how to actually enable developer options and adjust your DPI scaling and your transition scale for the animations. This is something a lot of people already know, so if you know it, you can skip below with the outline that I'll put in the link in the description. You're gonna tap on build number five times. That's gonna enable developer options. I already have it turned on right here at the bottom. If you scroll through, you'll have the option to make a few changes. The one of those changes is changing the animation scale and duration. They're set to one times by default. I like to change them all to a half. You can see I've changed all three of mine. That's gonna speed up some of the animations. It makes your phone seem a little bit snappier. Does it actually improve the performance of the process or anything? No, but it does speed up the day-to-day -day sort of uh, opening of your apps because it's not running the animations as long. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the DPI scaling. You could adjust DPI scaling on the S7 Edge within the stock settings a little bit easier, but Samsung buried them inside developer options this time, I guess because they figured most average consumers are not gonna mess with them. Basically what DPI does, this is going to give you a way to get more or less information on the screen. It's dots per inch, kind of like PPI, which is pixels per inch. They both have a lot to do with uh, the amount of stuff you can view on the screen, but they do mean different things overall. Uh, you can basically up the number here. 411 is the default on the S8 Plus. You can up the number a little bit and it's gonna allow you to fit more stuff on the screen. So I like to use around 450 or so. And if you hit, so hit okay here, it's gonna take you back and you'll see here that now I've got a little bit more text fitting on my settings. So you can play around with that until you find one that you like. Basically, if you bump the number up, you're gonna fit more stuff on the screen. If you bump it down, you're gonna have a little bit larger text. You're gonna have less information on your screen. You can play around with that and check it out. Now, the next thing which a lot of people have asked me about is the stock weather widget for the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. You know if you use a third-party launcher, which I'm using Action Launcher 3 right now, you cannot get the stock TouchWiz weather widget on your home screen. So there is a fix for that. A guy over at XDA Developers actually came up with a Zuper widget theme. So if you install Zuper Widget Pro, which is right here, it's an app from the App Store. It is a paid app, I'll link it below. You can download his custom theme that he made for the widget, and it looks very, very similar to the Samsung stock TouchWiz weather widget. You can mess around with it and add on the location and stuff that is on the stock Samsung widget. I sort of played around with it in Zuper because I just wanted the weather icon and also the actual temperature there at the top. But you can mess around with that. I'll drop the link below. His instructions are very easy to follow. All you need to do is basically take his Zuper widget theme, you know, just paste it into your settings in Zuper, and then open up a blank widget, put it on your home screen, and it's gonna look really nice, just like the one that I have there. I'll also talk about that more in my theme video where I cover how I made this all murdered out black theme. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get into these three ADB commands. Let me go ahead and boot up my computer. All right, YouTube, we're ready to go ahead and get into these ADB commands now. Before we do, I wanna acknowledge the source of this. It's always important for me to cite the sources. Mari over at XDA put together this great article about these three tricks for your Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. He's the one that we're gonna be working with all of his commands today. So check out the link below for his source article. Now, the three tips we're gonna look at are enabling mobile data and hotspot quick setting tiles. This will allow you to recover mobile data or hotspot if your carrier has disabled those from the quick settings. You'll notice on the T-Mobile Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, mobile hotspot is there by default, but mobile data is actually not included in the quick settings. So we're actually gonna be able to add mobile data today to the very end of the quick settings. The next thing that we're gonna do is modify quick settings layout size. This will allow you to change the grid size. Now, if you notice within your settings here, you can change the size up here at the options. If you go down here to the grid here, you can actually change it up to a five by three. But if you want something like six by three, six by four, et cetera, you can't do that within the stock Samsung settings. These ADB commands will allow you to take advantage of that. And then the final one, which actually Mario included, but I have not been able to get this to work on the Snapdragon 835 version from T-Mobile and Verizon. That is enabling quick replies from the lock screen when you have a secure lock screen enabled for a pen or a swipe or something like that. 
Uh, this one actually hasn't worked for me. The Exynos model, which I'm assuming what might be what he tested it with, that is coming next week to me. So I'll test it out on that and I'll let you guys know if it works for the Exynos, but not the Snapdragon 835 for whatever reason. Could have also been turned off by the carriers. So let's get right into this. The first thing you need to do before you get started is make sure you have ADB installed on your Mac or your PC. Now you can do that for Mac in an easy way by installing Android Studio and running these two commands from the terminal. So you just open up your terminal right here, which I'm gonna show you guys my commands. You would copy and paste these. That will make sure that your ADB is set up once you install Android Studio. There's various other ways to do this. You can also do it on the PC in various ways. I'll drop links below about the Mac and PC installation of ADB tools. You do need that to get started. Now, once you actually have ADB set up, you wanna to test to make sure it works, type in ADB at the terminal. It should give you a list of the commands there, and then you'll know that you're good to go. Once you connect your phone, which I've done here to the S8 Plus, you can go ahead and type in ADB devices, and then it should show you the device number right there, and then you'll know you're good to go. Now, in order to make sure all that's working, you do have to do a few things on the phone as well. You need to go into developer options, which we enabled earlier, make sure USB debugging is turned on right there. That way you'll actually be able to recognize the device and see the number when you do ADB devices in the terminal. So now that I have everything set up and you guys are ready to go, if you guys have questions about setting up ADB, you can drop me a comment below. I'm just gonna use Mario's commands here and copy and paste. That's what I recommend you do as well because it's the easiest way to go about it. So the first command is ADB shell. I'll take that back to my command line here, copy and paste ADB shell. Then we enter the shell mode. Then the next command, I'm gonna go back and grab here. This command right here allows us to get the list of quick settings tiles that we currently have running on our S8 or S8 Plus. So when we put this command in, I'm gonna copy and paste it. I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna return a long list of the quick settings. You can see all the names there for the quick settings that I have, like airplane mode, Bluetooth, etc. I'm gonna copy this list and paste this list into my favorite text editing app. I'm just gonna use notes because I'm on the Mac and it's right there. Full list. We're gonna need that here in a second. So make sure you have it copied and ready to go. Now we're gonna go back to Mario's article here, grab the next command, which is gonna allow us to append the mobile hotspot and mobile data. You can also replace this with any other sort of quick setting tiles that you don't have on your phone that you want to enable. So we're gonna go right back here, paste his command. You'll notice here where he has your old list. This is actually where you need to erase that and then paste in the list that we just saved up to our text document. Go back into the command line, paste my set, set of quick settings, go ahead and hit enter. And then once you hit enter, you can go ahead and check on your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, now you have mobile data and mobile hotspot. Of course, I already had mobile hotspot, so I sort of added it twice. I can go back later and delete it, but now I have mobile data where I didn't have it before. All right, so that's the first tip. That's a great one, I really like it. The next thing we're gonna look at is modifying the quick settings layout size. Now to do that, you have a couple of easy commands. You've got the QS tile column, QS tile column landscape, QS tile row. I'm gonna focus on the portrait mode here because that's what I use the most. The thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the settings part of this command, not the ADB shell, because I'm already in ADB shell. I'm gonna copy and paste that back into my command line. I'm gonna change the six to a five because I want five columns in my portrait orientation. Go ahead and hit enter. And now if you go back to your Galaxy S8 or your S8 Plus and you actually scroll down the settings, you'll notice now I've got five columns in my quick settings. Now I'm gonna go back and change the number of rows here. So in this case, I wanna have four rows. Again, I'm not gonna copy the ADB shell, just the settings part, copy and paste. I am gonna stick with four rows. Go ahead and hit enter. As soon as the command returns, you can go back into your phone and check. Now your quick settings, you've got five columns and four rows, which I think looks quite nice, better than the default setup. You can play around with the numbers until they work for you. Now, the final tip is enabling quick reply from the lock screen. Just to show it doesn't work, I will copy this, and all you've gotta do is copy right here, the settings, put secure lock screen. So you're just gonna copy this, and put that in the terminal. And as you guys can see, I don't get any errors but whenever I go back and try to reply on my T-Mobile Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, I always need to enter my pen. I don't have any messages right now, so I can't really demonstrate it. But if you guys have any luck getting that to work on the 835, 
certainly let me know uh, and I'll try to figure out what went wrong for me, but I haven't heard of anyone else with the success. For those of you using the Exynos model, you should be able to use that command. All right guys, so that's my full tutorial on these top five advanced tips. If you guys enjoy the video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter at the links in the description. I appreciate you guys checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.